There were heavy losses on both sides. Imre Naj arranged a ceasefire. The Soviets agreed to withdraw their troops from Budapest. The Kremlin hoped Naj, now Prime Minister, could restore communist authority. But the patriot in Naj was taking over. Cautiously, he decided to back the Hungarian revolutionaries. I'll tell you quite honestly, and this is not only my opinion, this is what every revolutionary thinks, at least the ones who dare express their opinions. We only recognized Imre Naj as our Prime Minister when he actually acknowledged the revolution. He announced, this is not a counter-revolution, this is a fight for freedom. During the fighting in Budapest, many people had taken refuge in cellars. As they emerged, they found much of their city in ruins. The Hungarians thought they had won their revolution. They came out to mourn their dead heroes. Western correspondents flocked to Hungary to report on a victory. What do you hope will happen now? Uh, we hope uh, that our country will be entirely free and we can work and we can have free connections with the West. Uh, uh, People were enormously optimistic that life had changed. Everywhere in the country, the Hungarian tricolor was flying with the middle torn out, the communist emblem torn out. It was, seemed to be, a completely liberated country. Many Hungarians looked to America and the West to guarantee their revolution. Behind me is the Blue Danube in Budapest. The scene is calm enough here, but the rest of this city is in a bloody turmoil. For more than a week, the Hungarian rebels have been attacking the signs of Soviet tyranny. It's become a platitude to say of a people that they've earned their freedom. But it's the only thing that can really be said of the Hungarians today. Whether they will be free is still in the issue. But if sheer guts can win freedom, they'll win. <laughs> 